welcome to the Holly Furtick YouTube channel. We have something very special today because we are celebrating the release of a very special project, which is finally out today. It's called Old Church Basement. You have heard some of the songs. You've heard Jaira. You've heard uh, Talking to Jesus. You've heard Wait on You. I know you've heard that one because it's going crazy on YouTube. But today you get to hear all of the songs and I am so excited for you to do that. So in order to celebrate today, I brought two special guests on here, people that you know and love, girls that you know and love. I have Naomi Rain with me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and Tiffany Hudson. And we're just gonna have a chat. We're gonna talk about worship. We're gonna talk about um, the album, of course, and we're gonna have a great time. So before we get started though, I wanna show you, look what I have. I have a really cool hoodie. You guys like this? Yes, yes I um, love it. Here's the front in case you wanna see. It's this nice like purple color, but not too girly for the guys. Mm -hmm. You can still wear it. Um, and we're gonna be giving one of these away and talking about the merch and where you can get the album and all of that at the end of our conversation. So if you want a chance to win this hoodie, make sure you watch all the way to the end. All right, let's get to know each other. All right, so we'll start with you, Naomi. Okay. Tell me where you're from and what was your church background growing up? Okay, I'm from Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. That's New York City. Uh, but I spent a lot of time in Brooklyn. Um, that's how the boroughs are. We just kind of like drift through. So I grew up, I grew up in a mega church um, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, a lot of, um, as an African-American, mostly um, not very culturally diverse in that way, but definitely intergenerational. My parents were on the worship team. They were worship leaders there. And so I got to know like all the inner workings and be a part of all the things. So yeah, it was a really, it was a really great experience. I love my, my home church. Okay. And is that the same church that you're a part of now? No, no. Okay. So moved a little on and now I'm pastoring at a church in Mount Vernon, New York. It's called Fresh Start Christian Center. I really love those people. Um, and it's a little smaller. It's about maybe two to 300 members. Okay. Um, but I, I like that. It's like small enough uh, that I can feel like really connected. That's that's amazing. I love it. Mm. All right, Tiff. Yes, yeah, so I grew up in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, my family originally started kind of as like traveling evangelists. So <laughs> I know that yes, we really- Yes, we have this in common. Okay. It's so rare too. It is very it's rare. It's crazy. So tell us a little bit about this traveling yes. evangelism. So my family lived in a camper for the first like 10 years of my life and just went church to church, state to state. Basically doing just like your family, my family, and then my cousins and my grandparents. Okay. So we like to say we're like just a traveling family circus. So like how many campers? So there was three, total. three campers. And I was homeschooled to go to, you know, go to grandparents camper and they would teach me phonics, then go to my cousin's camper and they would teach me science or whatever. Oh so it was just like how life was. And so, yeah, that's how I grew up for the first like 10 years. Um, which I know you can relate to. I, can, I actually, a lot of people don't know this about me, but right. I too <laughs> lived in a camper. We would have a couple of campers and then we had like a whole team of, of more like single people and people without kids that would stay in people's homes in the church. Okay. And then we would stay at the church for two weeks wow. and do um, revival ministry every wow. night um, for two weeks and then we'd move on. And we did that, my family did that for three years That's while amazing. I was in high school. So then after that 10 years, how old yeah. were you? So I was actually around 10. Okay. So I was born just like wow. wherever on the road we were, it was, happened to be Wisconsin. Okay. So yeah, it's just kind of, my parents would always say wherever, you know, the pain came when we were on the road, that's where the girls were born. So, oh, so goodness. random, but I was born in Wisconsin. And then after the 10 years, my family kind of felt called to plant a church in a very small town in Pennsylvania. So my parents still pastor that church. I was kind of raised in that church and yeah, I loved it. Kind of pastor's kid being at church every night of the week. And that's how I was raised. Did you have an old church basement? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk more about that later. But um, I have some lightning round questions for you guys. So these are like one word answers. You have to pick one. Okay. okay. All right. Um, cook at home or take out? Cook at home. Cook at home. Same. <laughs> I get sick of takeout. 
I get stressed ordering takeout. Yeah. Like I get so stressed on DoorDash and I can't find what I want. And then everybody in my family, like trying to figure out what they want to eat. Yeah, it's, it's too much. It's easier to and it's cook cold. at home. Yes. And it's cold when yeah. you get it. Now, I do like to eat out. Yeah. Yes. Me too. <laughs> See? But I would rather cook than have takeout. Okay. Same. Sweet or salty? Sweet, salty. Hmm. I'm going to go with French fries. <laughs> yes. Got to. And That's potato true. chips. Yeah. I'm like a potato oh. person with salt on the potatoes. <laughs> Me too. Although I do like sweet. Uh, just, um, just a little bit. <laughs> um, all right. Would you rather read the Old Testament or the New Testament? New. Actually, Old Testament. New Testament. Okay. The stories are great, though. Oh, no, but Acts. Okay, no. Okay, you're right. You got stories in Acts. That's yeah. True. Okay. You're right. I would. I might trade it for Acts. I love that book. And just... Yeah, but if you give it. up the Old Testament, which you don't have to, right. <laughs> you don't get the Psalms. Uh, oh. Okay. Or the Very Proverbs. I Proverbs. love Proverbs. All right, I only have one more speed round question. Online shopping or in-store? In store, I said it. Yeah, but you can't beat a package on your front door with clothes in it. You can't oh, beat you it. Can't That's beat that. true. Especially, Especially when you forgot. Yes, you and forgot. you're like, what is this? <laughs> and everything's like, I ordered this? Yes. I didn't even remember. <laughs> so that I picked that. Yeah, I'm gonna oh. go with online shopping as well. <laughs> All right, but let's talk about what people wanna hear you talk about. So I want to ask you guys, do you remember, because both of you are incredible songwriters, do you remember the first song that you ever wrote? I do. Okay, go. So it's called, okay, I'll just sing it. I was seven. Okay. <laughs> you were seven years yes, old? Wow. I was seven, and I'll sing it in my seven-year-old voice. Okay. Okay. It goes, everything begins as a seed and grows into an experience everything everything <laughs> begins as a seed and grows into an experience there was a whole like other verse but i sang it music I, and lyrics written by naomi yes it was a principle that they taught us in school i was in private school uh -huh. at my church that uh -huh. i grew up in in my old church basement okay um even though it was really nice. But yeah, we that, that was the principle they gave us. And then I remember walking online and I had that song in my head. And so I sang it to my friend. And then we ended up singing it for like a week in our circle time. And I'm like, my song is getting played already. And I was seven. And so I was excited. So yeah, it was a thing. Okay, before I get to you, Tiffany, tell me more about this. At that point, did you think, I might be good at this. I might want to write more songs. Did you feel it? When did you know that you wanted to write songs and and worship for a living? So I think I really knew it when I was about 10. My parents got me a keyboard. I must have, like, they must have known and I knew it. But in that, when I was seven, I was like, wow, people want to sing the song uh -huh. that I that just came to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like I had a gift. I never thought I was good at it. Right. Um, but yeah, it was around then. Wow. Do you think you're good at it now? Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to cry. No. Um, I th I'm starting to see that I probably am good at this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I fully believe mm -hmm. it. Well, I mean, I think that's something people need to hear mm -hmm. because I think people look at those that they see on a stage and they see their, their perceived success and they see their confidence and they think, I just, she must, how could she not know? Wow. How could she not think, wow, wow I'm so good at this, but... <laughs> I think the thing that makes you, the thing that drives you is that feeling that mm. I'm not good at this. I need to do better. The song needs to be better. Mm. The song could, you know, wanting to collaborate with people. I think that's sort of what yeah. drives you is that feeling. You need that feeling. Definitely. And I think without that, you kind of take on this like arrogance almost. And there's no, there is no push. To me, it takes the fun out of, out of it even, you know. I think I didn't realize I could sing until American Idol came out. And I saw that people actually couldn't mm. sing, you know? Like, I was like, oh, wait, there are some people that really can't sing. And I was like, maybe I can, you know? Like, I think it's like sometimes seeing the contrast and being in environments and pushing yourself, I think it helps you say, okay, no, that is actually not good, what I wrote. Mm -hmm. And this and this one actually is. And mm -hmm. I feel like in this space, I've been able to see a little more and go, okay, maybe I can be objective, but yeah. Wow. Do you remember the first time you ever led worship? I do. I was I was 12 I think and I sang shout to the lord um yes. 
Yeah, it was good. That my Jesus, my Savior. Yeah, I remember that. It was fun. That's awesome. I was scared. Wow. <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course. Are you are you not scared anymore? Um, still scared. <laughs> still scared, but not the same way. Different not in kind. the same way. Yeah, it's more like now I'm like, like this kind of. I don't know, like energy. I want to, I want to, it's like an anxious energy, but mm -hmm. I'm no longer like afraid because I'm now I'm not in the place where I'm like, I have to hit all the nodes. I have to do everything right. I've come out of that. It's like, yeah. okay, come on. You'll literally drive yourself crazy if you're trying to be perfect. Right. That's not my thing anymore. I used wow. to be like, people might think things. And now I'm like, it's just okay. I'm, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. okay. Um, but I'm still a little like, okay, Lord, like, are you going to speak? Are you going to do like, you know, you just want it to go well. Right. And to, if you're leading with someone else, you know, that's more of what it is. What did you say? Anxious excitement? Yeah. I like that. I relate. Totally. All right, Tiff. First song you ever wrote. I'm trying to remember. I don't think I was seven. Um, the first, I wrote a lot of like really silly little songs that I can't remember. The first one I remember was called Cover Me, kind of based on like Psalm 91. Are you going to sing it for us? I mean, I feel like Please. I have to <laughs> um, It goes something along the lines of Cover me under your wings Finding rest in the shadow of the Almighty, something like that. So oh. I just remember. And you I, were how old? I mean, I must have been like. Were you still in the camper? <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> okay, so you we were over 10. I must have been like 13, 14 ish. And I just dealt with tons of fear as a kid. And that was mm -hmm. just my song. I read every night, memorized. And so just kind of sang this like song, Cover Me Under Your Wings, as this like safety protection kind of song. So, so you wrote the song for yourself? It was totally for myself. Totally for myself. Something to that. Yeah. Okay, do you remember the first time that you ever led worship? Well, like I said, I'd been singing songs on a stage from the time I grew up, but leading worship was new whenever my parents kind of planted a church. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, being the pastor's kid, kind of like just put into a position before I was even ready to mm -hmm. be there, just out of a need. So me and my sister would kind of lead for our youth group. I think I, I think probably the first song I led was like Revelation song. Oh, oh Carrie Jo. Carrie Jo. Yes. Love her. <laughs> That's it. So. <laughs> Revelation song and Shout to the Lord. I'm feeling a little old <laughs> that these are the first songs that you guys led, oh but we, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> All right. A few questions from people on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> Lizzie, Lizzie FC 12 says, when are you two doing a song together? <gasps> when? When? Well, I mean, Let's I, I really do that. All right, Lizzie, my honor. Uh, if they do it, we will give you a uh, writer's credit. Yeah. <laughs> a percent? A one. Half? <laughs> half a percent. Point zero one percent is what you will get Featuring on that song. Lizzie. <laughs> Lizzie's idea. Maybe you can work Lizzie's name into the yeah, song. I like it. I like it. Um, Jen Marie 41 wants to know, what is your favorite song to lead right now? Hmm. Okay. I think my favorite song to lead right now is Be Praised. Mm. It's a song we did on Maverick um, with Aaron Moses. Um, not really the verses, but the chorus and the bridge is just super um, vertical and it's, mm -hmm. it's blessing me right now. I'm worthy. Like worthy is like the song I just sing around. I was my house. gonna say worthy. Mm. Yeah, I just it like we used to sing it a lot, and then recently it's just like found a whole new meaning. Well, worthy is a song that my husband um, wrote as he was walking onto the stage to preach. Not the whole song, mm -hmm. but the chorus. Mm. Worthy is your name. See, I'm not a great singer. Actually, it's that was great. really it good. Actually, yeah, was those really were good. good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, fun fact, you don't know this. I don't know. You probably know this about me. I uh, was a background singer mm -hmm. when we first started for like the first 18 months of our church. Yes. And would occasionally lead songs. And I tell people it's only because we didn't have anyone better yet. <laughs> as soon as we got some better people, I was out of there. And also, this was back before we had uh, monitors with the lyrics. Oh. And I am, my mm -hmm. husband... Okay, I am not, I never know the words to songs, <laughs> ever. I could know everything about a song and literally have no idea what it's about and not know the words, especially like 90s rock music or whatever. I know all the songs, but I have no idea what they're about. Mm -hmm. And so when I would lead songs, he would give me songs to lead. A lot of times I just 
would not put in the work to memorize the lyrics and I would often bomb them. And the last, <laughs> one of the last songs that I think I ever led was at Christmas time, he had me sing Angels We Have Heard on High. Oh. <laughs> and I, there's a lot of words there's to that song. There's a lot of words. And I really botched it. And <laughs> we got home, he was like, Holly, I, I just don't understand. It's like one song. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so, so funny. That's a hard one. Yeah, um, that is. The this, Christmas songs are usually like the worst. And Excelsis Deo? What is yeah. that? <laughs> it was like a really fast version too. It was like a like an upbeat version of Angels We've Heard on High. I'm not, I don't even remember it. I'm not going to sing it. But okay, wait. We're talking about Worthy. We're talking about Worthy. Yes. So in that particular song, he wrote the, he heard the chorus as he was walking on stage and he kind of talked, he told the band what to play. And then he pulled one of the singers and said, sing this. But I feel like he's done that to you he, as well. Yeah, it was No One Beside. Oh, No One Beside. Yep. That's a great one too. But yeah, you always got to stay on your toes. Pastor might just call you right up and you, sing a brand new song. Yes. Say, so. sing this, which I, <laughs> I'm, whenever he does that, I'm always like, how are they going to remember the words? <laughs> but you have people that are like typing them out for you. He did that to me too. Yeah. When we were here. <laughs> After I think I was like praying and talking and he was like, okay, now go sing this. Oh, and yeah. I was like, I don't remember what it was, but yeah. it, I think it was after. I do vaguely remember that. After Build Your Church. Yeah. I do um, remember that. <laughs> Naomi Matterher asked this question. She said, what advice would you give to your teenage self? Mm. Oh, um, it's okay to be sad. Hmm. Oh. It's okay to be sad. I think this year I've been, oh no, in the last two years, I've been experiencing the full range of emotion. And I think it's been good um, in helping like deal with transition and all the things that have happened. I think sometimes we just move from sadness and we think it's bad. It's not bad. I think there are reasons to be sad yeah. and you have to do that um and i think when i was younger i just kind of skipped over everything i was uh -huh. like oh no that doesn't exist you know and i was like walking around like that and i think it made me a little awkward and weird um with people and i realized that relationships are the actual currency of life right it's mm -hmm. how you move how you grow how you, yeah. you need relationships and so i would say it's okay to be sad and feel your emotions mm -hmm. so that you can be a person um and relate to people yeah what do you think? I would say like enjoy the journey and don't just like wait for the destination. Mm -hmm. Because when you're young, all you want to do is be old and all you want to <laughs> do is drive or get out of high school. But I would just say like you just miss so much of like that season wanting to be in the next one. Yep. Like you only get that once. Like enjoy not paying for the bills and enjoy getting meals cooked yes. for you and all these things. So I would tell my teenage self like don't skip over this season because it's really special and you only get it once. I, so I love sweet. both of those. Um, somebody wants to know, this is Journey with two Ys, <laughs> wants to know, what is your vocal warm-up routine? In this current season, it is non-existent, <laughs> but <laughs> when I am warming up, um, I do a 13-minute warm-up um, with this guy, um, Chuck Gilmore, he does a warm up because I usually, my larynx comes up too high and chokes off and so I was losing my voice a lot. And so I started doing that thing and it worked. I try to limit how much I speak um, and try to get good sleep and drink lots of the water um, and no caffeine, no dairy. Like I'm, I try to really stay off of that, no gluten. That's how I take care of my voice. Goodness. I want to do what you do because you hit some notes that are just crazy. Tiffany, are you serious? No, I'm not. You I'm sing serious. so much higher than me. <laughs> no, what are we actually not a, talking about? Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll do a song together and, and, sing, and then we'll see, see who can sing higher. Who gets the high part? Um, honestly, I just do like a 10 minute little warm up, a little bit of and little like scales, and that's about it. So, do you, you, okay, you said you're not doing it right now. Mm -mm. So, when was the last time that you did it? I have to say, honestly, like six months ago. Okay. And do you do that religiously every time before you go on stage? Yes. If I don't, afterwards, I'm like immediately hoarse. So if I don't, I'm losing my voice. So I found that out lately. 
Well, you know what? I'm not. I used to be very like over singing, mm-hmm. over singing. I'm singing smarter now. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm actually, I think also the places that you sing, the sound systems, all of that yeah. matters right. yeah. on how you use your voice and how you, so I don't, my voice doesn't shred anymore. It wow. used to, but it doesn't anymore. Wow. I think it's also interesting that you talked about water because you can't just, the funny thing about hi- keeping yourself hydrating, hydrated and hydrating yourself is you can't just be like, oh shoot, I'm about to go on stage. Let me chug a bottle of water. Right. right. All that does is make you have to pee while you're yeah. singing. And you know Which what we've happens. already established is not a good thing. Okay. <laughs> so, good. so when you say stay hydrated, like how, how much water, do you have like a system in that or are you, do you track it? Do you track how much water you drink? I do. I don't always get it, but I try to drink half my body weight in water. And I usually get about half that. Every day? <laughs> yeah, every day. Wow. Yeah, I just have this bottle that tells me to fill it up twice. I usually drink two bottles of it. So. Every day? Every day. It just oh says like 9 a.m. to yeah. like it tells you how much to drink. How many ounces is this bottle? Is it oh, one of those Lord. big, big ones? No, it's like it's like this. Okay. So, it's probably like 32 ounces. Probably, yeah. So you're drinking 64 ounces of water a day? I am, yeah. That's a gallon, right? I'm drinking about that because mine is like double that. It's like wow. a two-gallon big boy. Wow. And it's like wide. Dang. I'm not going to say how much water I drink because <laughs> it's not 64 ounces. Well, I, drink- I don't give up the cream and the coffee or anything like that. So. Oh, I can't do it anymore. What's one piece of advice you would give to young worship leaders? I would say, maybe as cliche as it might sound, I would say, let Jesus hear your worship before anybody else does. Mm. That's something I've really like felt convicted about. And just, I don't know, the first time like Jesus hears that you love him and that you trust him and saying all these things, I would hope that that isn't the first time like, he's hearing that when everybody else gets to hear that as well, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's what I'd say. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I think along those lines, I would say, just let your worship be real. Mm. Don't worry about the people. Actually worship God. You know, actually worship Him um, as you're you're leading. I think sometimes we get so focused on, I've got to remember the words, I've got to do this presentation. and and Yeah, worship God. And if that is your goal, if that's your point, you'll do it and you'll be leading others in worship because you can only lead people to where you're going. Right. Yeah. So if you don't actually do that, right, then you've led them nowhere. And if you're caught up in yourself. Right. Um, Okay. So my husband always says that um, the first, uh, I'm not going to say this right because, you know, he says everything so great. But (laughs) the idea is basically when you're starting out, we talk about this a lot in the context of preaching. When you're starting out, it's okay for you to imitate someone because imitation mm-hmm. is how you learn. Right. Yeah. So it's great to have a hero and somebody that you imitate, but then it's important to find yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do you think about, like, is there someone that you had that's a hero of yours that you would say, oh, I totally imitated them. And then how do you allow yourself to break away from that? Because I think one thing that makes the two of you both so unique is that when I'm watching you worship, you 100% feel like you're comfortable in your own skin. Mm-hmm. From the from your outward appearance and the way that you dress, it feels like you. It, it it's not. I mean, it's not about being stylish. It's not like you're stylish or not stylish. You're both very stylish, but you feel you're like you. You don't feel like you're trying to wear some trend that doesn't fit fit your personality, mm-hmm. but. It's, it's not just the outside, it's like everything, the way your voice sounds, the, the, the way that you lead, the way that you express yourself, all of that is completely authentic to both of you and I think that shines through. How did you get to that place? Like who did you start out imitating and then how did you get there? <laughs> you can go. <laughs> um, mine was my mommy. Um, I oh. watched my mom sing and that was who I, look to I, I think I imitated her and I think it's good because I've got half her DNA well half of my DNA is hers and so it just was it was natural I listened to a lot of sing, a lot of singers growing up but I didn't really um there weren't there weren't like worship leaders that I really followed outside of I think when I heard Jen Johnson mm-hmm. that she was one of the first worship leaders I was like yeah. oh wow like this is like dynamic and like 
there's something about her, um, even Stephanie Gretzinger. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Jen is like, she's so herself too. She, like she's barefoot on the stage right. and she's, you know, all over dancing and doing all these amazing things and it feels authentic to her. And she can be your hero, but you're not kicking your shoes off. <laughs> and because then it wouldn't feel like Naomi. It would feel like Naomi trying to be Jen. Right. Mm -hmm. I think there was a point, though, in my life where I just, I don't know what that is, where it's like, just release your own sound, like yeah. who you are. I spent a lot of time in the prayer room, um, leading worship in a prayer room. And when you're in a prayer, they're not praying for like 20 minutes. It's yeah. two, three hours. It's a long set. When you do that, you have no choice at some point to, but to be yourself. Right. You know, and so it just kind of grooms this and cultivates this relationship with with you and God. And I'm I feel like I was just able to be me. I don't I don't know. I never really struggled with like being myself. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it, it was just kind of like, well, who else are you going to be like? Why put energy into this? Like when this is natural, this is already happening. Totally. Um, and, and I'm grateful. I actually think it's because people were they were affirming me yeah. as, as it went on. And so I think you do need people around you that go, man, I love when you are you, you know, yeah. and continue yeah. to do that. Um, I think it gives you the freedom and space to do that. Um, Which I think is a great answer for both of our questions earlier about what would you say to your teenage self? Yeah. Who's around you? Yeah. Wow. You know, who's, who's encouraging you? Who's telling you like, hey, you're really good at this, but you might want to work on this, this, and this, or, so you know, yeah. maybe don't kick your shoes off. <laughs> right. You need people in your life that will say that to you. Dang. All right, Tiff. Yeah. Um, there's like a lot of people I looked up to that I, that I one day hopefully get a chance to like truly thank for like what they've invested into my life. People I don't even know, but definitely Stephanie was one, like just her worship. Um, Carrie is one. And then honestly, Kim Walker was, one of her first albums was so like foundational for my own finding my own voice in worship because mm. it was a song and then the next song was called spontaneous song one spontaneous song two spontaneous song three and like listening to her just like sing whatever she wanted to the lord taught me how to do the same mm. and i just feel like looking up to people like that that it wasn't just about what they were singing but it was about now you can do this in your own way and finding that that own like your own worship like on your own so those people for sure like helped me do that it's so funny that you say that because i've told my husband multiple times i've said to him i'm like when tiffany leads when she really gets goes to that place i almost feel like i'm intruding on your wow. like private space with god wow. i and it's it's really cool. I've wow. definitely I've definitely felt you go there multiple times, and wow. it bring it 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 brings everybody. You bring everybody along with you into this like almost like a secret space. It's like mm -hmm. you you kind of are opening the door, but it it feels like you do that at home, mm -hmm. and not like you're just trying to to manifest it on a stage in front of yeah. people. And I feel like that really shines through that's sweet no thanks for saying that i think i heard um on some podcast someone said like the nature of the holy spirit is not learned on a platform oh yeah. like unless wow. you're learning it behind the scenes and in, in yeah. private spaces like you can't just get up there and lead people to a place you've never been it's like mm -hmm. it's not learned there it's got to be learned somewhere else that that can overflow mm -hmm. in those spaces so something i've been learning but which I think is also a great answer to the question of what would you say to young worship leaders? It's like, yeah. are you worshiping in your car? Are you right. worshiping in the yeah. shower? Are you worshiping in your bedroom? Or are you just imagining, you know, there's a difference between worshiping in your bedroom and singing into your hairbrush. Yes. yes. You know, yes. there's a difference. Totally. And, um, and I think that it really, it, you can feel it uh, in both of you when you lead worship, that you have your own living, breathing relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And you're just there and you're singing and you're, you're using your gift, but your gift, it, it, your relationship with God is not, is not uh, growing. Your faith isn't growing on stage. Mm -hmm. 
your faith yeah. grows yeah at, at home i was just telling someone this the <laughs> other day um i like we're working on a project that's different it, it's not it's not like worship music that we sing in a church but the point was like you don't get platform worship by doing platform worship you right. get it with car worship you did it you get right. it by washing the dishes you get it yep. with conversations with your children and your husband and your sister and your brother and having to forgive people and yeah, being yeah. cut off and yeah. when you're driving down the street and trying not to cuss the person out and saying lord let just bless them <laughs> you know those are the things and to me that's like the real worship these are moments where you actually are building and cultivating a relationship with this God that we sing about wow. on a platform or in a pew, mm -hmm. you ca you don't you can't build a relationship with God in those in those moments. Uh, yes. Not not anything that's really sustainable right. and worthwhile. Right. Those are monuments. Those are moments. That's like the the wedding. Right. It's not the mm -hmm. marriage. Right. Love and it. so those moments are beautiful and they can help. They can shift you. They can spark something. They can pivot you, you know, and those are beautiful. But if we're not having a day where we wake up and we're like, good morning, Holy Spirit. Like, I love you. I love to be with you. Yeah. I, when you speak to me, I don't know how the Lord speaks to you, but he's nice to me. Yeah. He's kind to me. And yes. even when he's, even when he's rebuking me or he's telling me, he's Naomi, kind. why are you doing this? Yes. You know, there's, there's so a way true. that he speaks to me. It, there's a real relationship. Yes. And so I don't know. I, I think we have to sing from that place. We have have to love people and live from that place yeah. and that has to show up everywhere and whether you're not you might not be a worship leader you might be a plumber you might be a business person or a salesman like let that that will show up in every space that you show up yeah. you know so true so true Goodness. can we talk about the album for a minute you guys, so I love this album so it's much. So good. I love it so much. I feel like it is fresh. Like it is a fresh sound that is just being released in our world. And I, I really, when I say I'm excited for people to get to listen to it, I really, really am. So here's what I want to ask you. First, give us a little BTS, okay? <laughs> is there a moment in the writing room from any of the songs that just really sticks out to you something that you're like ah, I'm not, I'll never forget that moment or every time you sing the song you remember how this part came to be that's you <laughs> oh you're answering it too. <laughs> for me it's gyra mm. for me it is gyra we were in that basement of that house and just chilling okay so like in your mind you're like I'm writing the song with Stephen Furtick. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, I'm like, this is crazy. This was the first time that you had written together. First time. Okay. And he's just chill. I'm like, oh my God, he's a person. So you're like, <laughs> you're just trying to get past that stuff. But as we got into it, it was like a dope writing session. Champ, we didn't even get that gyra part. Gyra, you are enough. That didn't come till like after we wrote the verses. Yeah. After we wrote, um, I'm already loved. I'm already chill. It came afterwards, but that section when we sang, uh, we were doing a reference for it. We had written the song, um, and I think we went to another song, Shall Not Want, and we were singing, I'm already loved, I'm already chosen. And that, I don't know what it was about the melody, about the room, like us looking at each other. It just felt like, oh, wait, yeah. this is something that I need, and yeah. it's something that the church needs. Yep. This is something that we need. We have to come to grips with this for once and for all that this is just his will. He loves us and that's it. Um, and singing that and that is enough. Yeah. Yes. What? Because you know how right. many times, how many yes. days do we live like it's not it's enough? not enough. Yes. And feeling you know? like it's not enough or you're not enough. And then the song takes you there too. Like just when you're like thinking about how you don't have enough, your mind starts to be like, well, not only do I not have enough, I'm not enough. And then the song goes, I am enough. And you're oh. like, Oh, so good. Yes, God. Tears. Was, I will never forget that moment. And sometimes I listen back to the voice note of, a, of that, rec the, you know, the recording of that session where we sang and we talked about dry bones and wet bones and like just weird random things that, <laughs> that got us to that. You know, it's like, what? This, this project. Yep. Okay, go to <laughs> Yes, that song is so special. I would say a moment that sticks out to me is we got together to write that one day. It was Pastor Steven, Chris Chandler, and then myself. And that's when like the chorus and the bridge of Wait On You came to be. And I I remember Pastor kind of saying like, he was like, it didn't, like 
that's all it kind of was. Like right. no, when nothing else came. And so I guess we all kind of felt like, well, like it's awesome. It's catchy, but like it didn't go anywhere. How um, much of the song had you written that day? Do you remember? It was only the chorus and the bridge. Okay. Wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. And then I'm going to wait on you. Just those pieces. It wasn't any of the verses or anything. But, um, and I've kind of mentioned to Pastor before, I feel like I'm always the rookie in the room that is just totally mystified to hear like a song on an acoustic and then to see where it goes. Like, right. I'm always shocked. I'm always like, how did this happen? <laughs> Not that I don't believe in it and it's like smallest form, but I just like, I'm so amazed at like what can happen with a song. And so then they had taken it, you know, to Dante and Brandon and finished it. And it became like my absolute favorite, like worship anthem. But what sticks out to me every time we worship to it and I hear it, it's like the, like the process of the song so accurately reflect, like reflects the message of the song. Like mm. it didn't happen easily. Ah. It's like, we had to kind of wait on the song. Yep. And like, it's it's exactly what the song message has to be. I'm like, it didn't happen easily. It Like it needed its time. It needed its process yeah. to become what it was. And it involved like a lot of different people, which I think is so beautiful before yeah. the song came to be what it is now. So it's just like, I'm always reminded like that song needed the process because of what that song carries, you know? Yes. So. Okay, so keep going because my next question is, um, what moments were special to you on the night of the recording? Yeah. And I know that this, this was the song that you said was super special to you too. So, so, all right, we're with you. You guys wrote the, the chorus and the bridge and everybody went home being like, eh, it's, it was, you yeah. know, yeah. it was good, but I don't know. Yeah. Then we have, everybody comes in. So was it the day that the days before, right before we recorded, where Dante got on it and yep, Brandon. Okay, yep. so they come in, they add the verses. Yep. And then a couple days later, yep. we go to record it. Yes. So tell us about that moment. So like I said, like I loved the song, but I just always like, I didn't know what was gonna happen with it. And when they just started to lead the song, it was kind of just this overwhelming like atmosphere to me. and. When they kind of went into all just like, they that wait on the Lord <laughs> shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles and soar. Like, it's just like one of those moments. And I don't even think it's like a, you had to be there moment. I think like it completely is reflected mm -hmm. on the videos. And when you listen to the song, you feel strength rising over you. I, I listen to it. I've listened to it every single day since it's been out and probably will continue to do that. But it just was one of those moments that like, I can't put like accurately in like words. It just was like when God speaks something so deeply in your spirit and like it just fills the atmosphere, it just felt like so special. Let's watch a clip of it. Let's do it. <laughs> While I'm waiting, I'll be praising. While I'm waiting, I'll be praising. Oh, 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 it's about what you do when you wait. Why complain when you can pray? That was, that was such a special moment, such a special night. I, I remember when we were, I got to be there. There weren't, there weren't hardly, there wasn't hardly anybody in the, there was no crowd. Mm -hmm. There was just right. a few family members. And I'd taken this, this video. I was real careful not to take videos because I wanted to experience it. And I didn't want to be like with my phone half yes. the night and not, worshiping and getting to be in this special place. But it got so special that I grabbed my phone and I, I took a video. And one of the things that I will never forget and that I loved 
was as I kind of panned around, I actually got a clip of you standing mm-hmm. off the side because you weren't, you don't lean on this song, standing off to the side and you're just worshiping God and you're in this other place. I mean, as all of us in the room were. Right. And I think it was just such a moment for everybody and every, that's why everybody that watches this, um, this song is able to, to feel the presence yeah. of God because it was yeah. just, it, it's tangible when you put this song it on. Is. You can just feel just courage and confidence yep. and patience and um, hope. Yeah. Yes. Hope. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not about just waiting. It's about what you do when, when you're, you're waiting. waiting. Yeah. That summed up the entire song to me. Like, it's so beautiful. There was like this fire, this electricity that was moving through the room. And it wasn't just what we would call like the anointing or the whole, it was like, it was this agreement. It was mm-hmm. this agreement. Mm-hmm. Like, That's we're awesome. going to wait on God. Wow. And that is just, and I'm going to be honest, as much as we can feel in the, in, in the, when we watch back, you can feel it. I honestly will never forget the moment in the room, yeah. Yeah. you know? And, yeah. and that to me speaks to what was actually happening because I felt like the Lord was showing us all that this project was different yeah. mm-hmm. and that he was going to do something yeah. with it that we didn't even plan on when we said we were doing these songs. I think there was a moment where we all kind of like, we're looking at each other like, wait, do y'all understand what's right. happening here? Right. Something's happening. Something special is happening. Yeah. So that to me was like the icing on top of this amazing red velvet cake. Mm. Yeah, there was a shift for sure. I felt it. It's like in the room, it's like something's mm-hmm. happening. Jesus. All right. What was a special moment for you that okay. night? Okay. I have two. They're quick. Um, Million Little Miracles mm. blessed my socks off. Such a, such a, a, a little, what would you, just a, a little surprise there. Mm. It, it was so different. It was simple. Yeah. It's, you just repeat it, but then you realize you're sit, you're literally thinking yes. over your life. Like, oh my God, you've been so good to me. Yes. Like what is actually happening? Yes. How did I miss this? And how did I miss that? And how did I miss, you know, it, ugh, that was crazy. And the way Joel led that, it just. I was I was finished. Um, I was like hiding out in the back on that one, just on my face. And the second one was. Wait, let's see a clip. Oh. I've got miracles on miracles, a million little miracles, miracles on miracles, count your miracles one, two, three, four. I All right, so what's your second one? My second one, okay, now I just thought of another one. What am I going to do? I'm going to go with, because I already posted about Chandler crying during Gyra, but that was like a deep moment. Oh, yeah, that was that was special. It was like, no, like God singing this song to you. But after we sang Used to This, we like went into this like flow. And to me, it helped. It was one of those other moments where I felt like solidified and like, yes. oh, God. Talk about Used to This for a minute, because uh, like people are going to be super familiar with talking to Jesus. Obviously, Old Church Basement is the first song. So mm-hmm. I, I, I worry about the songs that are six, seven, eight, because <laughs> I worry about them because I want everybody to hear every song on this album. Yeah. I, I truly feel like every time I'm like, no, this one's my favorite. Oh wait, but this one's my favorite. <laughs> yep. No, this one's my favorite. I really love all of them. I particularly love Come Again and Used yes. to This together. Yes. I think that there, it's the, I don't know. There's just something I can't stop playing those two songs together when I have a moment alone or when I'm getting ready to, sometimes when I'm getting ready to like study for a sermon or read, just read my Bible or whatever, I'll just play a worship song just to sort of get my mind and my heart. And right now 
those two songs together are my thing. So talk about Used to This. So Used to This, um, we wrote that uh, Brandon, Pastor Steven, Aaron Moses, and myself, we wrote that together. And it kind of came up out of nowhere. It was the second song we had written for the day. And um, Brandon just started singing something and he was like, minutes turning into hours. And we were all like, what? We have to keep singing. So we just started like flowing, flowing. And I think what I, what you're saying about the song, it, there's an intimacy yes. in it that's yeah. just like, oh, it's me and Jesus. And it's like from the beginning, like when you first were like, you're amazing and you're my savior and you're everything. Mm -hmm. um, there's that thing in there. And um, I remember just being like, um, I could get used to this. And Pastor Stephen was like, that, that. What I can give you, and so we were like, oh, and so we just started to like scramble around it. But it's something that came about so beautifully. Yeah. Um. We we switched rooms, and usually when you change locations, it could either like refresh you. It's like changing your socks, and it's a good thing, or it's like, oh man, it kills everything. But when we we switched rooms, went to the sanctuary, and began to sing it, it was like beautiful. I almost felt like like this incense that was rising. And when we sang it that night, we actually like kind of just sang the song. You know, usually, you know, us mad folks, we float on everything. Right, right. We kind of like just sang the song pretty succinctly and it was like a thing. And then there was this flow that came out of it um, that I don't know that anybody outside of that room will ever really get to experience. But to me, it helped like prophetically Yes. line up some things for like what this album is going to do in yes. the earth and so, isn't that just like god like he just like does things it's like it's not for everybody this is like for you this is for us and um like but what I, would you I build just have your to church? say when you get into this moment where you're like oh i just i think you had to be there i think people feel that when they watch these mm -hmm. songs i think they 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 feel something about the fact that you were there and you were giving your all and you were worshiping and there was no crowd and you're you're just in the truly in the moment i think that translates mm -hmm. we have a clip of it let's watch I love that one. I love how you're like softly singing spirit come in power. Because a lot of times that's something that you sing in an anthemic song. Like spirit come in power. Yeah. But in this one you're like, it just feels so personal and so yes. intimate and so beautiful. Guys, <laughs> I'm so excited about this album. I love it so much. And so I am much. so thankful for you guys and, and the work that you put into writing these songs and living these songs and then bringing them to life and setting aside your egos and being able to come together. I mean, talk about unity. Right. <laughs> we want unity in our country so bad, but I feel like we keep missing the point that unity starts with me mm -hmm. and with you and with you and the people that are in the room and, and just, and coming together and being able to collaborate with Elevation Worship in Maverick City and bring this beautiful offering to God that I think yeah. is just going to bless so many people. Yes. I didn't get to share my favorite clip, Ooh. Um, which again, every song is my favorite. <laughs> They're like my children. Um, Graham actually asks me all the time. Graham's my middle son. He's like, mom, am I your favorite? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm always just like, whatever, Graham. But, and I know these aren't my songs. They're not my, they're not my children. I didn't write them. I just listened to them and get to enjoy them. But I 
truly feel like they're all my favorites. But I wanted to talk about the opening song, Old Church Basement. Yes. Um, for right now, we'll call it my favorite song. Um, <laughs> but I have this memory of my husband and I were driving back from a trip. Mm-hmm. And it was just after Christmas. And we were just having a great time in the car, having great conversations. Our kids weren't there, so that was always nice. And um, <laughs> we, he started asking me, he was like, I want to write a song about the church basement. He was like, what do you remember about your youth group? And we just had, we laughed. We just had the best time remembering metal folding chairs yes. and lemonade in Gatorade jugs yes. <laughs> and powdered lemonade yes. in Gatorade jugs, those big orange things mm-hmm. and um, motions, hand motions to songs that we would do. And, um, and even talking about overhead projectors. And the I remembered just, it's so amazing when you start to have a conversation with somebody and you're remembering all of these, these things that you, essentially you'd forgotten. I remember the first time I ever sang Shout to the Lord yeah. while we were having that conversation. And I, I like I literally know exactly where I was when I heard Shout to the Lord for the first time. And it wasn't in a big fancy auditorium. It was a tiny little like fellowship hall type room with an overhead projector. And that'll tell you how old I am, <laughs> um, 41. But I, we just had the best time reminiscing about it. And then like three days later, he comes home and he plays this demo for me. (laughs) And I'm like, oh my gosh, you actually pulled this off. You actually did it. And it's, it's like, it's, it tells a story, but yet it leads me to worship. And it's just so cool. So check this clip out. We got together every Wednesday night. About 30 teenagers My friend Josh bought a cheap guitar And barely knew how to play it He wasn't putting on a show Wasn't well known Wasn't trying to be famous But we sure touched heaven In that old church basement you sometimes when I am struggling I will put on an old 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 song like a song Mm. from 10 20 15 and a song from 10 20 years ago that was like my song at that time Mm -hmm. and it'll just minister to me and I believe that these songs are going to they're going to have a life a really long life that truly touches people and brings them to worship. And I think it's, they're gonna touch people who maybe have never been even introduced to worship music. I think I think the yeah. album is that good and it's that yeah. special. So thank you. Thank you for everything that you put into this project and for just continually blessing me and blessing everyone that you guys lead and for coming and chatting with me today. This was so Lovely. much fun. I'm so glad <laughs> you invited us. Yes. I love everything. Okay, so a couple things. We have some merch, so don't forget to go to, I think it's, I'm gonna put it down in the, um, in the what do you call it, the description. I'm gonna put it in the description. Uh, it's store.elevationchurch.org. And we have awesome Elevation and Mav City merch. This one is Gyra. And guys, check out the back of this. Love yes. It. Don't love you love this? Yes. Um, there's all kinds of great merchandise. We're going to give one away. So here's what I'm going to do. Put in the chat, what is your favorite song on the album? And we're going to let this YouTube video live for about 24 hours. And then we're going to pick a winner. And we'll let you know. 
um, we'll con find you and we'll let you know that you've won. Just let us know in the chat what your favorite <laughs> song is. And we're gonna give away one of these hoodies, but be sure to go and check out all the amazing merchandise. And then also make sure you download the album, make sure you thumbs up on um, Elevation Worship, Maverick City, subscribe to Elevation Worship, Maverick City Worship, is that what it's called, the YouTube Maverick City channel? Maverick Music. Maverick City Music, and then we've got Naomi Rain on Instagram, Tiff Hudson on Instagram. We're gonna put it all the things for you to subscribe and follow. It'll all be in the description. If you liked this interview and you wanna see more like this, make sure you give me a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to my channel, and I hope you have a great day and that you enjoy this album as much as we have. See you back here next time.